Welcome back everyone, this is Than from Tidal Gardens and in this video we're going to cover one of the most expensive corals in the market today, the Scalemia button corals. One thing you will see right away is that these corals come in some very striking colors and exotic patterns complete with trade names such as the Bleeding Apple Scoli or the War Paint Scoli. Scolemia are very close relatives of Acanthophilia. In fact, for years, Acanthophilia were imported as Scolemia. The two corals are perhaps more similar than they are different in that they have the same shape and care requirements. They both prefer low to medium lighting, and they do better in areas where they are not exposed to strong current. Perhaps the most important thing you can do for these corals is feed them. They're one of the easiest corals to feed, as the slightest hint of food in the water triggers a dramatic feeding behavior where they quickly extend their tentacles and accept food. I like seeing these corals feeding in time lapse like this. In real time, you don't get to see some of the subtle details, like how the coral redistributes the water in its body from the outside rim to inflate the tentacles closer to the mouth. Sometimes I marvel at just how different corals are than what we typically see on a daily basis here on land. If you made a space alien movie where the aliens looked like this, nobody would buy it. I can just see the director saying, nope, too weird, get me that guy in the rubber suit. Anyhow, I digress. Okay, question of the day is, if you have a skull in your tank, where do you like to place it? A problem I always ran into with this coral is that they look great by themselves, but for some reason don't aesthetically blend in with the rest of the tank, so they tend to just sit at the bottom all alone. Let me know in the comments, or better yet, attach a video response showing it in your tank. I mentioned earlier that these tend to be on the expensive end as far as corals go. Now there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, they're popular. Anytime you get a situation where a coral is popular, it's going to drive the prices up. These corals really are not that rare in the wild. It's the high demand for them that keeps them pricey because there's plenty of corals coming from the same waters that are far less common and sell for quite a bit less. Number two, they really can't be propagated at this time. Propagated corals over time lower in price as they become more abundant in the marketplace. That's yet another reason why propagation is a great thing. It's possible to use a bandsaw and cut one in half, but you have two immediate problems. First, scolies do not tend to heal as well as some other large polyp stony corals, so it's possible you may lose one or both halves of the coral. Second, it takes a very long time for this coral to regain its round shape. In fact, I've never actually seen it happen. It may take years. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to find us online, here's our site, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, happy reefing.